Hey everyone, and welcome back. So, with the release of 4.25, there have been some changes and improvements to the features on the uh, the mobile platform. And one of these changes is the installation process for Android devices. This is now almost entirely changed. So if you've tried using the setup from the previous video that I've covered, then that process likely no longer works for anything 4.25 and above in the future. So as well as some general changes to the install process, there are also some bugs and issues with the install process that I'll be covering in this video as well. So for more general information, you can head over to this link to read about the changes and this page for the step-by-step -step install guide. Do keep in mind though that this guide doesn't address some of the issues that a lot of people seem to be finding during the process uh, and that's something that I'll cover in the video when we get to them. As always, links for these will be provided in the description down below. To get started, it's recommended as well that if you've had previous versions installed using the Codeworks setup, that you do completely uninstall and remove any residual files from that installation. If you think you're going to be running your project between versions and you need support for 4.24 or below, as well as 4.25, again, the documentation does provide some support on how to do that. Um, it is covered, but it can potentially cause issues. So for my setup, I'm going with purely 4.25 and above, and I've removed the Codeworks version. Okay, so with all of that out of the way, the first step is to download the Android Studio installer. Specifically, you're going to want the version 3.5.3 and then choose the Android Studio IDE.exe download link. Locate wherever you have that downloaded and run the executable and just press next on the first couple of screens without changing anything. The default settings are gonna be needed for this. You can also change the install directory. However, this is another thing that's caused me issues in previous attempts of installing this. So I'd recommend if you can to keep this to the default directory for now, as whatever issues could be causing some redirectory issues may be fixed in the future. But as of recording this, it seems to be causing issues as well. With that done, we can just press next again to start the installation. And when the installation is complete, select next one more time and then select finish, making sure that you still have start Android Studio ticked to ensure everything was successful. Now, if this is the first time using the Android Studio, you'll be asked to import some settings. You can leave this set to not import anything and then click OK. And then on the next screen, you'll likely be met with a prompt for an update. Close this as we want to be using 3.5.3, even though it's not the latest release, it's the latest version supported with Unreal. Again, check the documentation though, as this might change depending on when you're watching the tutorial. So if 3.5.3 isn't the latest version, then just swap that out for whatever the documentation is suggesting at the time. Okay, so we're gonna hit next a couple more times and keep the install type set to standard. And then on this screen, I'm just setting the IDE to use the dark theme because apparently that's what programmers do. And that will take us to the final page where you can select to finish the process. Also keep a note of the install location just here, as we'll need this for the SDK a little bit later. With that all done, we can now close out of the Android Studio. I'll probably never see that lovely dark theme interface ever again. And this is where things get kind of buggy at this stage. So the documentation states that you just need to head over to the 4.25 installation location, and then into the engine folder, the extras folder, and finally the Android folder. You then need to run the Android batch file to install and link the NDK. You do need to make sure that you've restarted your PC at this stage. So go ahead and do that now if you haven't already. To get all of this synced up properly, you will need to restart the system. However, even if you've already restarted your PC and you try this, you may get an error message just here and a failed install, which I'll demonstrate. So again, making sure that you've already restarted the system. If you're getting this error message stating that the LLDB cannot be found, what you want to do is close this, right click on the batch file and select edit. And then inside of the text document, press Control and F and search for LLD. There should only be one result. And then just here, we want to remove everything, including the pair of double quotation marks, save this and exit, and then run the batch file again. You should see that this time you have a successful installation process. So we are kind of getting there. We can now go over to the Unreal project in 4.25 that you'd like on your lovely Android device. And all we really need to do here is a fairly standard process with everything else. We just want to focus on the project settings and under Android, just make sure that everything is set up as usual. You can copy the minimum and the maximum SDKs that I have here. If you haven't already, make sure that you have accepted the SDK license and everything else I've left set as default though. So the next important part is going to be going to the Android SDK section and assigning our directory paths. 
To get the SDK path, just remember the one that I told you to take a note of earlier. We're going to want that one now. If left to default, it should be under your username, app data, local Android SDK. Then we want to find our MDK, which it might default to the same location as the SDK folder, but just one folder in, as you can see here. If that has happened, then this again is incorrect, and we want to navigate to the MDK folder that is already in, and then select the folder inside of that with a random bunch of numbers, and that is, of course, our MDK directory, because why not? And then finally we have the JDK step, and again, the documentation here hasn't worked for me, and as you might not be able to tell from my voice in this video, if you're familiar with my work, it's kind of broken me a little bit. Uh, but regardless, the documentation states that you don't need to include the JDK directory. However, trying this with any of the possible setups that I found in Android Studio hasn't worked, as you can see here, if I follow the step-by-step -step instructions. So the solution that I found here is to navigate to the Android Studio install location, not the one in your username app data folder, but on the actual program files. And then inside of here, we want to find the JRE folder. Now with all of that done, I've compiled this. I forgot to actually record that step on the uh, screen, but all of this was done in one taking. So, and it was kind of done as I was going through fixing it for myself. So this definitely does work. I spent many hours trying to get this to work uh, and this process has worked for me. So, so I've got the results here on the screen just to show that the build did work. This is running on my mobile. The project that I'm using here isn't the one specifically from this playlist, but it's been an attempt of me getting the endless runner creator pack that I've released on the marketplace working uh, because that supports mobile and desktop build functionality. I just wanted to make sure that was working before finally releasing the uh, plugin and then 4.25 was released. And as it was proving to be so problematic, I decided I wanted to just share the process with others as I figured it might help people out if, because uh, I've seen a lot of people in the forums saying that the documentation isn't working. Some say that the step-by-step -step works perfectly uh, without any alterations from the documentation. Uh, others are getting loads of issues like this. So I just wanted to go through every different issue that I found and cover how to, uh, to correct those. So I'll leave this video here though. If you found the process here useful, then do consider checking out the Endless Runner Creator plugin or just leave a like on the video, that's good too. And of course, subscribe and confirm notifications to get updated as soon as my weekly tutorials are released. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.